My name is uh, Suresh Shinoy. I'm with a company called Alex Technologies in outside of Washington, D.C. in Virginia. Uh, I'm also a very active member of uh, what is called the Wheels Global Foundation, which was started by IIT alumni. Of, I'm an IIT graduate, and I'm one of the founding members and on the board of Wheels Global Foundation. And I've done other NGO work. I was chairman of the Red Cross in uh, Washington, D.C. and uh, Virginia and Maryland. And uh, I've participated in a lot of other uh, uh, activities, like we started the Chanoa Innovation Studio at IIT Bombay to help promote innovation, primarily, you know, mostly in the social, uh, uh, you know, uh, enterprise space. I was this is I've obviously read and heard a lot about the work that is being done in Hubli, and uh, uh, but what I saw was absolutely uh, amazing, you know. Uh, the scale of the operation, the efficiency with which, uh, you know, everything is conducted, the discipline with which, you know, uh, people work out here, the work ethic, uh, was an eye opener, because there are a lot of misconceptions, you know, that people uh, can't express themselves, or people are not very hardworking, or you know, people, there's a lot of misconceptions, especially when it comes to village thing. But when you see what is going on here, and uh, when you meet the people who are, you know, from at Agastya or at uh, within the foundation, uh, people who come from villages and who who understand the the, the dynamics of, you know, community development, uh, and their enthusiasm to solve these problems for themselves. And we talk about technology, and we talk about uh, you know finance and capital and all that, and all that is important. But without the enthusiasm, without the human commitment, you can put as much money as you want, nothing comes out of it. So that commitment needs to be there, and that is what I saw here. You know, the people are really committed, uh, they're enthusiastic, uh, and, and uh, they want to do good, you know, which is, which is fabulous. I think the opportunity is huge. You know, I mean, if you look at it from a, a national perspective, you know, um, just to keep pace with the the growing population, if you will, India has to create something like 12 million jobs. And it is not going to happen in the automobile factory or building consumer products. Those 12 million jobs, a large percentage has to come from social enterprise. And social enterprise, you know, is also important to just cater to the needs of the 800 million people who live in villages. So I think it is very important that what Desh and his foundation is doing here in Hubli is a model for creating jobs, for creating prosperity and a better lifestyle in amongst the 800 people who live in villages. So I think that's a big takeaway and people need to be educated about the opportunities. You know, everybody talks about the opportunity at the bottom of the pyramid, but unless you see what is happening here, uh, how an average the farmer can have, you know, quadruple his income through some simple technologies like drip irrigation, okay? Uh, and how, you know, electronic, you know, uh, digital India has transformed their lives uh, to becoming a cashless society. I mean, they, these people are adopting it. These people are actually living it. So, so you see that, you know, that, that growth that India needs to create jobs, to create opportunities exists at a very basic level in the villages, in rural India. And through the proper application of technology, you can scale it. There's no doubt about it. So, so there's, there is an economic opportunity, there's a social opportunity, and, and the people are ready to change. And I think that is the important part. First and foremost, I think uh, it is important to spread the knowledge. Uh, so more people need to see what the Deshpande Foundation has achieved in Hubli. And if everybody else in the different regions of India, you know, emulate what Desh has done, uh, then you can expand that significantly. Okay, you can, you can scale it significantly. <coughs> so first and foremost, I think it is important to, uh, <coughs> to, to sort of raise awareness. Just let people see and do what they're doing. And it can happen in multiple different ways. This dialogue is a very important step. One of the things that I suggested was to create virtual communities, you know, so 
we have communities of interest whether it's in finance or agriculture or clean water or energy or whatever education let us create those virtual communities so people who are working in that space can collaborate and every quarter or every year whenever there is a similar dialogue then when people get together they will already have discussed a lot on the internet and then they can take the next steps when they're meeting here in person so i think that's a that's a uh, that's kind of an interesting opportunity to leverage the internet to build these communities the second thing is that uh, there is a lot of uh, talk about government and private enterprise working together i think there's another important resource that is under leveraged and that is our academic institutions our universities i mean i saw a lot of students here at kle they are very smart kids you know they and and and, and i certainly know a lot of people at iit and and very smart kids as is here but that is a they are also you know they also want to do things that are practical that that they can see the results so leveraging academia academic research leveraging students to do these things at an early age uh, is a resource base that is underutilized i think we need to do more of that okay so a student volunteer student in a program you know israel does it there are some schools in america which do it there's community service projects uh, there is no reason why we cannot help the universities um, uh, design their curriculum in a fashion that it meets national goals for clean water and clean energy and so on so those are some of the ideas